27 arrived on scene. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chief of Police, Burbank, California, Rex Andrews. What you are about to see is an actual on-the-scene report of police work. And you will accompany the detectives and the watch sergeants in the field. You will be an eyewitness to the many situations in which an officer finds himself in the course of his tour of duty. It is our opinion that for seeing this, you will be better acquainted with the problems of law enforcement everywhere and better citizens for that knowledge. This is the city of Burbank, a productive place. Their big industries headquartered here. It's a busy place. There are railroads here and state highways. And most of the country's major airlines use Burbank's air terminal. It's also quiet here and clean. Keeping it that way is a big job. It takes training and skill and dedication. You're about to meet the men that do that job. You'll also meet offenders ranging from the con man to the common drunk. With the aid of the unseen police camera, you'll be 1097. You'll arrive on scene. Car 6, the St. Joe's injury report on boy hurt in explosion. Unit 6, 1097. A boy injured in a blast. Investigate. It might be a matter for police assistance or law enforcement. Maybe neither. In any case, investigate file a report. What were you planning on using this powder for? I'll just put my cap on it, just swear this. Put it in something. Have you ever done this before? No, I just started going prospecting. I just thought since I was out there, I'd be a little... But what are you going to cap it with? Well, just a regular uh, pipe cap, screws on the end. What kind of fuse were you trying to put in it? Oh, just, uh, we had some, uh, Plastic tubing, we just fill a little of this stuff. Uh, it burns pretty good when it's loose. There's no danger when it's burning. The doctors may be able to save the boy's sight, possibly his fingers. At this point, they're not sure. The boy had no police record. Action, none indicated. Report filed. Juvenile contact. <laughs> We just got a report from AI. That's accident investigation. But it includes accident prevention when that's possible. They've just spotted the car weaving down Hollywood Way. Possible 502 drunk driver. Here's the unit. Uh, that's the suspect in the fedora hat. This is a field sobriety test. Pretty reliable way to check for coordination, balance. We don't usually draw conclusions from it, but it provides some pretty good indications. This suspect isn't doing too well. Indication here? Better give him the full treatment at headquarters. Let's go along. Lieutenant Poirier, watch commander. He is giving a balance test and will break out an intoxicant. Oximeter, the intox gear. Each outfit comes sealed and sterile. It's only used once. 
The test is only given by the watch commander or the watch sergeant, with the cooperation of the suspect. Out of boy. Come on. I won't come back now. No, no, come on. That's all right. Put it back in. Blow. My kid can blow that thing up. Blow. Come on. Out of boy. Come on. Come on. Some more. Once the suspect has inflated the balloon, his breath is allowed to escape at a controlled rate from the other end. If you look closely, perhaps you can see a small vial of dark crystals directly above the balloon. They are being exposed to the suspect's exhalation. If they turn white in less than 39 seconds, intoxication is indicated. That's the reason for the stopwatch. The crystals are now completely white. Time, 18 seconds. Next step, booking. Principal job of the AI division, you could say it was saving lives. Every time a cell door closes behind a 502 suspect before an accident happens, they're saving a life. Yours, mine, the driver. But usually saving the driver's life is a whole lot harder. This man isn't up to any sobriety test. 502, drunk driver, maybe. The odor of alcohol about him is pretty strong. But even if he were conscious, he couldn't walk a line. He couldn't walk at all. Not with his compound fractures. No, he's just listed as an HBD, had been drinking. With the aid of witnesses and evidence, we can reconstruct the accident. It was a new car. He was traveling at a high rate of speed when he passed out or fell asleep at the wheel. The car swerved across the white line and jumped the curb on the opposite side of the street with enough force to pass through a plate glass window, rip a steel post eight inches in diameter completely out of its concrete base, smash through a concrete wall two feet high and a foot thick, across an alley, and knock bricks from the wall of the building next door. There were no skid marks. Everyone has his job and knows it on these occasions. The police officer must stand by unless advised by a doctor that the victim won't soon be able to talk. the victim's family. Yeah, the biggest part of AI is saving lives. Our 502 suspect sleeping it off in the tank probably wouldn't believe it. This man doesn't know about it. He's unconscious. He may not come around. job. Uh, wait there till they contact you. They'll be in the building talking to the man, looking for the suspects.
interview a bunker bit, one of the oldest ways to separate a sucker from his savings, theft by swindle. Easiest mark, the slightly dishonest. The guy that wouldn't steal, mind you, but can't pass up a get-rich-quick plan with a stranger, even if it is a little unethical. Next best, the naive, the uncynical. They'll take a stranger at face value and refuse to believe he's bad till he proves it. These are the ones who report a swindle. Trouble is usually too late. We've had three or four like that lately. Well, let's hear this man's story. Maybe this time. Ten or fifteen minutes, probably had a car. Check the parking lot. All stubs bear license numbers, times in and out. The parking attendants provide a list. They remember a car with two men. We get their license number, run a make on it. DMV gives us a name and address. Next, get out there. Here's the address. House dark. Nobody home. There's a light at the neighbors. Let's check there. Routine questions, and nothing unusual about the answers. Nobody lives next door. No one has lived there lately. Last tenants left no forwarding address. No score, no surprises either. A few days, a few jobs, and a couple of strangers in town begin to give the police department a picture of them. Appearance, speech, manner of dress, method of operation. These begin to narrow the field a little. There's just been another job pulled at the airport. Like the rest, the victim is a veteran, just discharged. He's coming in to tell his story. Detective Brennan's been assigned. I want to have a seat. I understand you've been uh, taking on this bunker old deal out the airport, huh? Uh, what time did it happen? Well, approximately what time? Well, it happened about... It was quarter eight when I walked outside of the fresh air. Uh, were you along? Well, uh, that's a... Well, this is some Marines. I mean, I didn't know. Personally, oh, I, I just spoken to them, and then I went outside to get some fresh air, see. I was sitting up there a while. It was about a quarter eight when I went outside. I came in, and I went over to the tank bar, and I had a soft drink. You know, he came walking over, and he got an ice cream, and he asked me, did I, uh, did I in the Marines? You know, I said, no, I said, just got this job. And he says, well, I was a Marine, too, and he said, my name is so and so. Johnny, he had something like his last name. Shook hands. He says, want to see the jets out there? He says, they got some F-80s out there. He says, they're undercover. He says, they're back at some bombers, you know. So I said, okay, I'll walk out with you. So, no, first I tried to get away from him. And I wanted him to sit down where he was a little cooling, you know, so. So then, uh, he just wanted to go outside. So I said, okay, so I walked outside, and this, uh, this little guy was out there. A uh, little, uh, oh, I guess he was Canadian or something, he said he was. He said, well, I said, we'll flip for us. Well, he said, we'll flip a coin for a cup of coffee. I said, okay, a cup of coffee's okay with me. I'll flip for a cup of coffee. He said, who buys the coffee? So I flipped for the coffee. And uh, 
the little Canadian lodge, so he gives this guy a dollar, you know. So I mean, just come on, he says, well, take him for all he's got. I said, no, I, said, I don't want nothing to do with it. I said, just leave me alone. I want to look at the planes and stuff coming in. He says, no, he says, okay. So he starts walking away. And the little Canadian walks, you know, for her. I was looking at the gate. She walked back towards the, you know, where, the, where you're sitting there, the yeah. waiting room. And the guy said to me, uh, I said, no, we were talking about money before we went out there. And I told him I had, uh, I had went down to PA because the bank wasn't open. I only got fives and tens and twenties, you know. I didn't have, uh, my wallet was all stuff. And he said, well, and then he went out there. He says, I got a wallet. He says, I'll give you mine. He says, to carry your money. So I said, okay. I said, let me see it. So he showed me the wallet, this thing here. And, uh, the story is not unfamiliar. They tried to snare this victim with an old game. Start out matching coins for coffee. Then the victim and one of the con men would supposedly team up against the other to win away all his money. It would appear to work. Then the losing bunco artist would put up a squeal, threaten to call police. And the other by this time holding all his money and the unsuspecting victims as well would whisper to the victim, let's split and run for it. We'll meet at the corner gas station in 20 minutes. And that would be the last the victim would see of the man or the money. But this GI didn't go for it. He didn't suspect Bunko. He just didn't want to be a part to cheating a stranger, a matter of integrity. So one of them hung around until he had a chance to pull a wallet switch. I say he looks somewhere like this, yeah. The little guy, that English guy looks like, I think he looks, the little English guy looks just like him. He's short, I'd say about five, five. Is that an English accent? Well, uh, well can anyone? we think that's a simulated uh, accent. I don't believe that's as real. It didn't sound too good either to me, but I figure, well, well, we'll take a report on it. You're the fourth one. But now we've enough information to try a stakeout. Somewhere here may be the Bunko suspects. They're also young-looking civilians with something GI about them. Army shoes, for instance. Veterans carrying mustering out pay? Some of them are. But tonight, one of them is a cop. You're now about to see some remarkable photography. We're hiding on the roof of the terminal building, looking down on one of the deserted ramps the Bunko artists seem to prefer. The man on the left is a police officer. That's one of the suspects standing there. That's the other approaching. What's closely now? The police officer identifies himself and they make a break in opposite directions. He grabs one, the other gets lost in the crowd. This is Sergeant Steckbauer. What, Sergeant? The suspect is being searched. His belongings will be impounded. The area surrounding the air terminal had been posted code five stakeout. That means all police vehicles were ordered to stay away. Notified of the capture, the sergeant was the first to arrive on the scene. Sergeant Steckbar will start some wheels in motion at headquarters. The district car is en route to pick up the suspect. Unit 19, request to 1029, local and L.A. Brown. WMA 47. Ten four, ten twenty three. Record bureau. Record. James Jerry Brown. WMA forty seven, five foot eight, one fifty. Brown.
to me, R&I, please. Yes, this is Wooden in Burbank. Badge number 64. You run one mail for me. WMA 47, 5 foot 8, 150, brown and black. We're running a make on the suspect. This is his package locally. L.A. is passing along whatever additional information they have on him by telephone. Tomorrow we may get more from the county or the state capitol or Washington. But by the time the suspect arrives at headquarters tonight, the watch commander probably will know more about him than he can remember about himself. Lieutenant Kevin, first interrogation coming up. The suspect has been through this before. He's been through this a lot. He imagines we're ready for him, but he has no idea how ready. They can't seem to understand this part of it, and that's good. It helps. How many times have you been arrested? Starting back the first time you were ever picked up. I don't know a long lot of time. You were pretty young at the time, weren't you? Yes. It's been about 72 times, hasn't it? I imagine. Are all these arrests for bunco? Yeah. They're all conformed to about the same pattern. And you've done uh, you've done time up in Clinton. Yes. For grand theft money. You did about what five years this last stretch up there? <clears throat> yeah, I got six five in one out. Now who's the old man that you've been working with, Bill? The guy without any teeth. You and he were out together. Remember the old man you were with? No, sir. I wasn't with an old man. No. Well, he looks old anyway. I don't know. He'd be maybe he's older than you anyway. No, this guy Ken, is uh, he's still of interest to us. I want to know more about him. Where do you think he's hanging out now? I gave you all the information I possibly could. Let me ask you this, Bill. You know, in your own conscience, what you've been doing out there. You know about what we know, too. Yes, sir. Now, do you think you're going to walk right out from under this thing? Nobody's going to tag you with anything? I don't know, uh, Chief. I mean, it's, uh... Oh, yes, you know. You've done enough time to know. You know just exactly where you stand. Well, the word was passed around downtown, and you got the word that Burbank looked pretty good. Someone gave you a bum stare, didn't they? <laughs> I'm going to sure be mad at somebody. You, <laughs> you won't be bothered with too many people out here. I'll be a walking, talking advertiser when I, when I do get put <laughs> on the boys not to come here. He'll sure be mad at somebody, somebody else, of course. This is a bunco case from complaint through investigation, identification, and arrest. Next move, now the department must prepare for the trial. Get ready their case against the suspect, and they must do it carefully and well. The man's 72 prior arrest may create suspicion, but they don't assure conviction. It's a job of many parts, this law enforcement, but a day's work to our officer. They're ready for the routine and the unforeseeable when they're 1097 on the scene.